I work as a security guard for a large company that has several buildings in the city. My job is to patrol the premises at night and make sure everything is secure. I usually work with a partner, but tonight he called in sick and I had to do the night shift alone. It was a rainy night and the streets were empty. I checked my watch and saw that it was almost midnight. I decided to start my rounds and headed to the main building. I entered through the back door and walked along the dark corridors. The only sound was the rain hitting the windows and the occasional beep of my radio. I reached the lobby and saw the receptionist's desk. There was a computer monitor on it that showed the live feed of the security cameras. I glanced at it and saw nothing unusual. I moved on to the next building, which was connected by a bridge. As I crossed the bridge, I felt a cold breeze on my face. I looked up and saw that one of the windows was broken. I wondered how that happened and decided to investigate. I entered the building and climbed up the stairs to the third floor, where the broken window was. I reached the room and saw that it was an office. There were papers scattered on the floor and a desk lamp was knocked over. It looked like someone had broken in and searched for something. I took out my flashlight and scanned the room for any clues. I noticed a drawer that was slightly open. I walked over to it and pulled it out. Inside, I found a folder with some documents. I opened it and saw that it was about a secret project that the company was working on. It involved some kind of advanced technology that could change the world. I was curious and started to read the documents. They were full of technical terms and diagrams that I didn't understand. But as I read on, I realized that this project was not something good. It was something dangerous and unethical. The project was called Project Nightfall. It was a plan to create a weapon of mass destruction using artificial intelligence and nanotechnology. The weapon would be able to infiltrate any system, hack any device, and manipulate any data. It would be able to cause chaos and destruction on a global scale. The documents also revealed that the project was not authorized by the government or any other authority. It was a secret operation that only a few people in the company knew about. They were planning to launch the weapon soon and start a new world order. I felt a chill run down my spine as I realized what I had discovered. This was not just a break-in. This was an act of espionage. Someone had tried to steal these documents and expose the project to the public or sell them to an enemy. I wondered who it was and if they had succeeded. I looked at the monitor on the desk and saw that it was showing the security camera feed of this building. I switched to different cameras and tried to find any sign of the intruder. I saw nothing on the first few cameras, but then I saw something that made my blood run cold. On one of the cameras, I saw myself. I saw myself entering this room, breaking the window, searching for something, finding the folder, reading the documents, and looking at the monitor. But it wasn't me. It looked like me, but it wasn't me. It was a clone. A clone created by Project Nightfall. A clone that had escaped from its lab and infiltrated this building. A clone that had stolen my identity and replaced me. A clone that had killed me. I dropped the folder and backed away from the desk. I felt a sharp pain in my chest and looked down. There was a hole in my heart. A hole made by a bullet. A bullet fired by my clone. My clone who was standing behind me with a gun in his hand. My clone who smiled wickedly and said, Good night, guard. I work as a delivery boy for a pizza company that delivers to any area in the city. My job is to take the orders, drive to the customer's addresses, and deliver the pizzas. I usually work with a partner, but tonight he had a family emergency and I had to do the night shift alone. It was a stormy night and the roads were slippery. I checked my phone and saw that I had one last order to deliver. It was a large pepperoni pizza with extra cheese. The customer's name was Mr. Smith and his address was 13 Elm Street. I had never heard of that address before and I wondered where it was. I typed it into my GPS and saw that it was in a remote area of the city. It was near an old cemetery and a forest. I thought it was a strange place to live and decided to hurry up and finish my shift. I got into my car and drove to the address. It took me about half an hour to get there. The GPS led me to a narrow road that was surrounded by trees. It was dark and creepy, and I felt a sense of dread. I reached the end of the road and saw a large house that looked like a haunted mansion. It had broken windows, peeling paint, 
and overgrown weeds. It looked like no one lived there for years. I parked my car in front of the house and got out. I took the pizza box and walked towards the door. I noticed that there was no mailbox or doorbell. I knocked on the door and waited for an answer. There was no response. I knocked again, louder this time. Still no response. I wondered if this was some kind of prank or mistake. Maybe the customer gave me the wrong address or maybe he changed his mind. I decided to call him and confirm. I took out my phone and dialed his number. The phone rang once, twice, three times. Then someone answered. Hello, a voice said. It was a deep, raspy voice that sounded old and sick. Hi, this is the pizza delivery boy from Pizza Hut. I'm at your address, 13 Elm Street, but there's no one here. Did you order a large pepperoni pizza with extra cheese? I asked. Yes, yes, I did. Come in, come in, the voice said. Come in, where are you? I asked. I'm upstairs, in the bedroom. The door is open. Just come in, the voice said. Okay, I said hesitantly. I felt uneasy about entering a stranger's house, especially one that looked so abandoned and spooky. But I also wanted to get paid and finish my job. I opened the door and stepped inside. The house was dark and dusty. There were cobwebs everywhere, and the floorboards creaked under my feet. There was a foul smell in the air that made me gay. I walked through the hallway and saw a staircase that led to the second floor. I'd assumed that's where the bedroom was. I climbed up the stairs and reached the landing. There were several doors on both sides of the hall. One of them was slightly open and had a dim light coming from it. I guessed that was the bedroom where the customer was waiting for me. I walked towards it and pushed it open. What I saw inside made me scream in horror. There was no customer in the bedroom. There was only a corpse. A corpse that looked like it had been dead for weeks. A corpse that had maggots crawling out of its eyes, nose, and mouth. A corpse that had blood stains on its clothes and bed sheets. A corpse that had a phone in its hand. A phone that was still connected to mine. A phone that spoke to me with a deep, raspy voice. Thank you for delivering my pizza. Thank you for watching Whispering Tales TV. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join our community of fellow thrill seekers. Get ready for spine-tingling stories that will keep you up at night. Let the whispering tales begin.